Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alessandra and today I'm going to do a short unboxing of a couple of orders that I got in the mail. One of them is from Afrobidia and I have to blame Turquoise Street for that because she has such a beautiful haul that it got me back into African beads, which I hadn't bought buy in a long time, but I really want to get back into doing more tribal design along with the more dainty ones. Um, and then uh, I also got more beads from Lila B. Um, because they were so beautiful and I already posted a video previously featuring some of her beads and I also got a set to make my own beads, uh, Kashmiri style beads like she does. Um, and I already have that uh, unboxed and I hadn't made a video but I lost it so I'll just kind of show you real quick how, what the set comes with so you can get an idea. But um, let's just go ahead and open these first and let's look at the beads. Okay, this time I got another mix that is sort of a pink and black mix um, that is kind of like the yellow one that I got, but it's a little different. They also had uh, another one that was kind of like, um, I can't remember. It was just kind of a watermelon color, but then I didn't get that one. But um, let's just open this one up. So we got some of these funky beads that we saw before in the yellow. I think this, they're very similar. Uh, and this looks like they're done with some kind of super duos, maybe. And uh, I think they have made this because I went to their YouTube channel and it looks like they got a whole, like the whole family kind of working on them, which is kind of cool. Uh, I wish my family was interested in beads, but they're not. Uh, but, you know, I kind of want to learn how to make, uh, you know, these kind of beads because those are kind of fun too. Not just, you know, the cashmere that are done with the uh, resin, but these are really, really cool. So that's the first uh, couple that we get. They also included some gemstone beads. These are beautiful. Those are like those DZI beads. I don't think I've seen any with the pink. Uh, I've seen white and black. So I wonder if they just kind of dyed them like manually or if they just found them like that. And then, of course, some beautiful purple agate beads, banded agates. And then we also have some of those um, glass beads that kind of kind of like in the Jesse James mixes as well. And before I move on to the beady beads, I kind of wanted to show you the more generic. So we got some resin roses again, like last time. Then we get some glass and we have some rhinestone beads that are usually found also in the Jesse James bead mixes, as well as these rhinestone balls, which I think they are just really, really pretty, especially for Shambhala bracelets. I guess these are also their signature beaded beads that are like pearly. And I think I've seen a guy beading these in their channel, which is kind of cool. Somebody in the family. So it's kind of neat, nice to see that the whole family is involved in making these beads. So that also shows me that they're handmade. They're just not kind of bought in China, at least not all of them. So not the ones that are beaded. So uh, I appreciate that. So these are really, really cool, I think. We also got some lamp work beads. This, uh, these were also featured in the previous video. They're kind of like this rose, um, I don't know, crazy beads, but really cool. And then there's some in black that have swirls. And I think this might be the one that she makes. I'm not 100% sure. But um, yeah, these are really, really pretty as well. I would love to learn lampwork beads as well. But uh, I haven't gotten around to that yet. So maybe one day. And we got these beaded beads that have these really cool uh, pink rivets. And uh, I really love the stark contrast of uh, pink and black. It reminds me a little bit of the Japan look. If you know what that is, it was a very... Um, popular look in the 1950s. Um, I think it came from Japan. I think that that was called Japan for that reason. But it usually consisted of a black finding and then this really bright color to contrast it. And here we have more traditional looking cashmere beads. As you can see, they're done with uh, the bead caps. And then we get some rhinestones and some beaded chain. And um, I really love these. They're the traditional black and silver. I have some of these, but not exactly like these, but this kind. Uh, that I've got in another haul that I would like to eventually share, but I haven't gotten around to it either, even though I filmed them months ago. But eventually I'll get to that. And I love these with the AB finish. I think these are really, really pretty. Uh, and once again, with those pretty enameled bead caps, these are really cool. And these are the biggest one. As you can see, there's quite a bit of detail in these. Uh, you can see the bead caps up top, but also small bead caps used to decorate as well as rhinestone chain, uh, mini rhinestones, and also cup chain. Uh, it looks really involved, so I'm going to try to do it with the kit that I got, that I told you guys about, and I'll share right after this before we get to the African beads. Uh, but yeah, it looks like it would be fun, but it looks like it could be also hard, and it would take a little bit of time to get used to making these, but we'll try it out. We'll see. So this was the whole mix, and then I also got some lamp work beads that I think she makes in a strand, so let's just take a look at those. And these are very beautiful and interesting. Uh, we got, once again, the ones with the swirls. Uh, and then we got some, you know, interesting flowers one and polka dots. And I love the blue and the pink and the fading. 
of the two together, as well as the black with the pink. And then, you know, this beautiful, you know, more unique kind of beads. I think it's a beautiful strand. And, you know, you don't have to use it all together, of course, if you want to, you could. But I would probably space it out with other beads and uh, maybe pair them up, pair some of these up with, you know, um, other beads to make maybe earrings. There's so many possibilities, but I really do love this strand. I think this is great. And I would like to get more strands from her as well eventually. Um, whether she made these or not, I'm not 100% sure. I think she did. Um, regardless, these are beautiful. So I'm really excited to use them. So I kind of started a cashmere -y Lila B box here, um, kind of a mix, because um, I wanted to keep them all together. So I'm just going to place them here, even the lamp work beads, and I'm probably going to label it as such. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have everything in here, and I plan to collect more, and I plan to make my own. So this will be a really fun palette to play with. But uh, let me pull out the um, kit that, you know, allows you to make the beads. So we can just kind of take a look at it real quick. So for now, I have this kit in a box. Um, it comes with sort of a letter that explains um, where to get, you know, uh, inspirations, but it doesn't have really necessarily like photographic, you know, step by step. It just has step by steps that are pretty basic. I think it just comes down to just trying it and getting used to it and just making things. So it comes with this core beads in blue. I got sort of a pink um, because that's all they had in the shop, a pink kit. I would have preferred a yellow, but maybe I'll get the yellow later. Um, and then, um, you know, the yellow resin, I mean, and, you know, maybe get some yellow beads on my own, but, uh, it came with core beads. I think you just put the clay around these and then it comes with, uh, this pink, um, I forget what these are called, but these go on top of the beads after you put the clay. I think that's how it works. So it comes with that. It comes with a tool, which I kind of appreciate because I don't want to use my really good jewelry tools to snip some of these stuff off, um, and getting, you know, the resin on there that would not be fun. So it's nice to have a separate tool for that. Then we get some more of these um, core um, holes. I don't know what they're called right now. I can't think of it. But uh, you guys know what these are called, like rivets, right? Is that what they are, kind of rivets? Um, and then it comes with uh, two parts epoxy clay for bead making. And this one is in a pink. Uh, I think it's, I believe both of these are pink. I mean, they go mixed together. So I think equal parts. And then uh, you let them cure after you set your crystals and stuff. And it comes with some glitter, which I don't know if I'm going to use because I'm not... Those are like the only cashmere beads that I'm not a huge fan of uh, are the glittery ones because they tend to come off. Uh, maybe there's a way to, you know, seal them properly so that the glitter won't come off. Um, I think hers did not come off, actually. So I might actually email her and ask her if I need help. But uh, it also comes with this neat little kit. And these are supposed to be really good quality uh, glass cabochons that are in different sizes. Um... It looks like they have some opal, some blue. See if I can get closer. And these are supposed to be checked. So they're really, really good um, quality glass. And then there's also these small ones. I'm not sure what they are, but I don't have anything like that. So I love that. We also get some more um, flat back rhinestones. Um, I think these are supposed to be pretty good quality too. They're not Swarovskis or anything, but uh, you know they'll be good for this kind of uh, project. you know. And then we get the really tiny um, beaded chains as well as some more of those cool rhinestones that stick out, which I can't get enough of. So I can't wait to make stuff with that. So we get it in two different sizes, it looks like. And then we also get some uh, rhinestone cup chain that is very small to wrap around the beads. So that's pretty much the kit. Oh, and it's also rods. I was expecting wooden rods, but these are actually metal, which are more resilient. So I appreciate that too. Uh, they seem quite sturdy. And uh, I guess you use these to clean off the beads a little bit or, you know, refine the holes, etc. I'm not sure what 15 means. Maybe I'll research it a little bit. But I'm excited to pull this out and make some. Maybe after I make a few, I can make some on camera so you guys can see. But I want to get used to it first because I haven't done it yet. So that was the kit for the Lila bead that I told you uh, guys I got last time. And now let's move on to the African beads I got. I'm really excited about those. So while I opened this, basically I was watching, I've been watching a lot of uh, Brittany from uh, Turquoise Street and uh, she really is getting me back into that more bohemian vibe that I love, um, that I kind of got tired of for a bit because that's all I was doing. And I saw her order some beautiful beads from this shop on Etsy called Afrobidia and they're in Arizona. And I thought their prices were actually quite good because although African beads are not super pricey, pricey, they're not really cheap either. They're kind of in the middle. Um, and they had, I'm not saying super cheap, but cheaper than most people. Uh, cheaper than um, 
say the beat chest. I usually get my beats from the beat chest um, or from Africa Direct. And they're good shops and they have a lot of varieties. But um, I saw their beads and I was like, these are really good prices and these are really amazing. So they get their business card in here. And of course I have my order. Um, but um, I'll leave the link for their Etsy shop as well if you want to go check it out. But I'm really cool. I'm really, really excited. So these were on sale. And uh, I have a hard time finding these for a good price. They're usually, uh, I mean, they're usually heavier, I think, the ones that I get. Uh, these are super light, but I do love how they are. They're very rustic, and I like the fact that they gave me a huge strand, like this long strand, for just $12. I thought that was a deal, because normally a strand this big will cost you, like, at least $30. Um, and they, they're usually coming in just one size. So this was kind of a mix of all the sizes, and I like that because... That way I can vary my jewelry depending on, you know, the size of my other beads. Um, then I saw that they had this beautiful yellow strand of recycled glass. And uh, I just love it. I think it's so beautiful. I always love recycled beads. I like that they're so organic and then they're large. And then they had this luminescent, translucent, but also kind of dirty and grungy vibe to them. So, and they come with little tiny pink beads too, spacer beads, which is kind of nice. Um, then I got, I think these are actually gifts. So it's really nice that they're sending gifts too. Um, I wasn't expecting that. So thank you, Aphrodite. This is great. So we get this beautiful green bead and, uh, some more of this organic kind of recycled glass lamp. And then just, uh, it's beautiful Ashanti blue bead. It makes me want to buy more of these. I love Ashanti beads. And then a more green one, almost like an adventuring color Ashanti bead. So they gave me these as gifts. So that was really nice. Then I got a beautiful strand of uh, skunk beads. These are vintage. They're not the really antique ones that you see on some shops that are super detailed. I have some of those, but they're also very pricey. I mean, I'm talking about hundreds of dollars per strand. Um, I have some that I've paid a lot of money for, and then I feel so scared of using, but I'm going to have to eventually break those strands um, after I organize. I'm still organizing my African bead strands because I'm kind of moving things around right now uh, from a room to another. But uh, yeah, this is how they look like. They're absolutely beautiful. They have this base of orangey red glass and then these dots. And I think they're so pretty and they're such a much cheaper alternative to those really expensive beads. Uh, of course, they're not the Venetian quality. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I mean, eventually, maybe I'll do a video on my African beads because I have quite a bit and I have some Venetian quality ones that are just gorgeous. But these are very cute. So, and I think it would be fun to use them in a bracelet or such, you know, so... Um, I like all beads. I like these too, as long as they're good quality. And these are like glass. Um, I love glass beads and I love gemstone beads. Those are my two favorites. So yeah, I'm happy to have these. Finally, I got some yellow beads um, that are kind of like uh, the Lewis and Clark style beads. Um, those would be very expensive if you bought them, you know, like antique. But these are kind of like a similar um, vibe. They tend to look kind of Venetian and they are beautiful. I am really impressed by these. I think these are gorgeous. And I got the yellow and there was a beautiful orange too. I wanted it so bad, but I had to kind of, you know, stop myself. And, you know, I need to I need to start using what I got and uh, not collect too, too much. But um, maybe I'll get it later. Um, but I do, did like all other colors. They have some beautiful turquoise. Um, and I was tempted to get them. But I just wanted some more yellow beads because I've been kind of obsessing with yellow lately. But um, I think it looks so pretty with the gray, as you can see. Um, I think it was like last year, 2020, the Pantone color was like a yellow with a gray and they go so beautifully together. But the cool thing about yellow beads is that they go with so many colors. And I never realized that until I started pairing them up together with other colors. They just go with so many colors. They will brighten up any design. They will bring, you know, immediate attention to something that might look a little dull. You just pop one of these and bam, you got some color. So yeah, these are absolutely beautiful. So um, this is the small haul for um, my African beads. And uh, then you've seen the kit. And I'll just pull out the beads here so you can kind of look at this cashmere from Lila Bee and the Lamport beads. Um, if I have to pick favorites, I really love these yellow beads. I think these are beautiful. Um, I do like these. Um, and of course, I always love these kind of beads. I like everything because of course I picked it, but seeing it in person is even more beautiful. Of course, I love all of these beads. I mean, I am not going to lie. All these large Kashmiri beads are just so pretty. And this trend really impressed me. I don't have very many Lamport beads that are handmade. I have very few and I've paid top money for them like back in the day. And they are much plainer than these. Um, some of them are beautiful. Don't get me wrong. and very unique. 
but I thought that this was a decent price for, I think this trend was like $14. Uh, I think I went recently on artbeats.com and, you know, don't get me wrong, those are beautiful designer uh, lamp work beads, but some of them, they cost almost $40 a trend for just about the same amount or less. So uh, I think this is a good starting point if you can't, you know, afford a super high designer beads. These are beautiful. So I have no complaints. And um, of course, I just love the mix of the black and you guys seen the other ones from another video. But pretty much this concludes my video. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and let me know if you like this kind of unboxings or not, if I should keep making them or not. Um, it's not really to brag or anything. It's just, um, you know, to show you what I got. Um, a little bit of stress shopping, a little bit of sad shopping, but also it, made, it makes me happy to see these beads and play with them and touch them. There's just something textural and uh, satisfying about touching them and looking at them. Uh, and I'm really excited to try to make my own as well. So that's going to be fun. Uh, but otherwise, I'll see you next time. Let me know which ones were your favorites. And, um, you know, if you want to subscribe, I'd love to have you. But otherwise, I'll see you next time. Have a great day.